Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, the world's greatest redneck. And you might wonder why I'm saying that. Well, let's wait for about a year. I'm going to tell you that every time I make a video. And we'll see if you don't believe it's true at the end of the year. <laughs> Psychological experiment. You know what they say. And uh, I've been uh, playing around with some stuff here. Uh, trying to play with my 3D printer. And I come to need a... Uh, iPhone tripod or something that's reasonable like that when I was trying to set the uh, prime weld torch to to work you know I needed to, to watch the voltage on the little Proma display as I made a test cut and then be able to keep an eye on everything else at the same time I just don't have enough eyes to do that so I would set my iPhone there and I was doing you know, how to really Mickey Mouse set up with a C clamp and stuff which wasn't good for it, and I printed some stuff. Now I printed this thing, which I think really is not all that wonderful because it needs a, something to keep the phone from popping out of there. But that's one of the things. And then I printed this little bugger, and it's just right. You just take, slide your iPhone in there, or whatever smartphone you've got. It's got a retainer here and a retainer down at the bottom. And you can do all the video you want with it just sitting there all on its own. Yeah, none of this is my uh, my doing. I downloaded it from Thingiverse. Now some of you might think that the day of getting a real bargain is over, but do you see that? That's double bubble. If you go to Sam's Club, you can buy 380 of these little guys for $7.48 plus tax. That's cheap. That's about two cents a piece. Who thinks you can get anything for two cents anymore? And I like double bubble. Anyway, the subject for today, this set of uh, countersinks that uh, Chuck gave me from the land where everything's made. Okay, and they, uh, they're not sharp. And that's the reason he was <laughs> so willing to part with them, I guess, but not to chuck in a certified nice guy. He really is. But you see these guys, they get these little cutter edges on them, and, and they're not sharp. So I decided, well, what we'll do is we'll take and uh, order a quarter-inch collet for the U2 grinder. So I did that and that was wonderful except I forgot that even though it's a quarter inch across the flats if you measure across the corner it's, it's closer to three eighths in fact it's closest to seven millimeters all right which is uh, what I've got here but I ordered a quarter inch call it and I waited until it arrived and you can imagine my disappointment when the you know the bits wouldn't fit in it and I got to measure around on the thing and ordered the seven millimeter. And so that's how we begin the tale of uh, uh, disappointments and, uh, you know, unfounded assu assumptions. And we wind up with the fact that, well, I got two more collets that I didn't have. But this grinder is not going to hold the thing in the right position to sharpen this guy because the sharp edge has got to go right here you know and there's just no way to position it for that it, it can't be done so we're going to do it by hand but we're going to use the uh, the U2 grinder because it's got a nice diamond wheel on it and it should do a really good job of sharpening all right all right, going handheld, I did a little preliminary test right there. I'm trying to give it a little back break and make the edge sharp at the same time. So that means I have to hold it down here, which is good for me. At least I can see what I'm doing here. And that's getting closer to sharp, so undoubtedly I think this is going to work. Not as perfect as I had hoped in the first place, but 
I think the edge is starting to take on a little bit of sharp, and I'm going to have to relieve it back this way some too. So let's see here. These, uh, the floats aren't exactly straight. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of maneuvering for me to hold it just right to get the, uh, a little bit of the back angle on it there. I'll bring you right back. Alright, so it appears <clears throat> that I can get the an angle on it to make it feel sharp. So, I've got five angles to do there. I'll do those and then we'll, boom, they'll drill us a hole and see if this countersinks it okay. Alright, I made a hole there that uh, would accept a quarter twenty tap just right for a 50% thread. So let's see if I can countersink it good or proper or nice. <laughs> That looks okay to me. Uh, see if I can get you in. Well, you're in close enough to look at it. I guess that should thread quite well now. Uh, Pierre would be proud because I, I did remember to chamfer before I tapped it. <laughs> so let's go on. I'll go ahead and thread the thing off camera. All right, I tapped it quarter twenty, and that certainly looks like uh, a good chamfer. I was, of course, concerned that I might not chamfer it far enough. Now, why I left that washer on there, I don't know. But you can see anyway, it's uh, it starts and everything's great. <clears throat> All right, so I sharpened the whole bunch of them by hand. <clears throat> and that little diamond blade does a really good job making smooth, sharp edges. And it's not the wonderful, beautiful, precision job I had envisioned, but they're sharp, and they'll make a countersink. Well, it seems like a lot of Bubba's family had gone to a funeral, and uh, after the funeral, there's Bubba and some of his uncles standing around looking at the tombstones. Somebody brought up the idea, so, well, how, what would you like to have folks say about you after you're gone? And uh, Uncle Irving says, well, he says, I'd sure like for him to say I was a, a good husband and a good father and just a regular nice guy. And Uncle Willie says, well, he says, uh, I'd like to say I was a great teacher and made a big difference in a whole bunch of people's lives. And they look around at Bubba and Bubba says, well, he says, I tell you what, he says, what I'd like to hear him say is, look, he's moving. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.